No, that's that means something. So you're still part of it, but there's another side to it. Yes.
Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything I mean, in terms of um, I mean, you have some music this evening. We always play music. Uh, 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 the On this side, can't go over this side. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. Hello, hello, how are you? Fine. Good to see you. Yeah, you. Uh, uh, how are you? Good to see you. Man. Up, man. One of the greatest drummers, one of the greatest drummers the world has ever seen, man. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and that's it. a motivational speaker. So what he said, I'm going to do my one last speech. And after that, I'm going to put a gun to my head and take my life. But nothing is happening for me. When he went to the school and he spoke in front of all of the children, they were actually crying about how he spoke of his life. On his way home, thinking about putting a gun to his head, the school called him and said, Mr. King, how much do you charge to speak? And from that day on, his job is speaking to people all over the world. He's been to Europe, he's been to Sweden, he's been to Australia, Italy, and I invite him to come to Jamaica to speak to you. Now normally when he, when he speaks, he commands a fee of 30,000 US dollars just to speak for half an hour or 45 minutes. I plead my case to him, tell him that I love this country. I'm 62 years old. I want to be able to grow till I'm old, man. I've never seen a young man that I don't love from my heart. I don't know you, my brother, but I love you, man. You might not do something like, I might not like your way, but I don't mean I hate you, man. You know what I mean? I didn't make you. So he wants us to bring greetings from the United States on behalf of the Honorable Minister, because we have to thank him. We could not have come in here without him. So this is it. 
King Alice. Go ahead, man. Hey, kings and queens, kings and queens. How land you? Listen to me for a minute. Listen to me for a minute. As I walked through your neighborhood and I walked through your city, I saw something that I didn't like. I saw kings is not really living like kings supposed to live. I'm a king in the United States, dog. I work with the Bloods, the Crips, some of the biggest gangsters in the world. They all work with me. They all love me because I speak peace and I speak unity. At the end of the day, I realized this. If my brother keep killing this brother, there'll be no more brothers. You got your guns pointing at the wrong man. It's not pointing at the right man. What sense does it make to fight a man around the corner from you? In the same struggle and in the same fight you in? What sense do that make? I travel the world, I make $30,000 every time I speak. But the first thing I did when I made my money, I wanted to go back to cities in countries just like this, grab my brothers and say, come with me. Let's get this money together. Order us to get this money, Kings. We gotta come together. We gotta rise up bigger than we ever been before. That's the greatest country that on the earth, bro. It got kid college kids in, at Harvard in the United States with Bob Marley posters on their wall, Marcus Garvey pictures on their wall. And they wanna be just like y'all. But they try to block our vision, bro, of who we are. We built pyramids, period. We masters. That's the words of Rick Ross, dog. We master. We royalty. And you got to love your sisters. You got to love your brothers. The woman is That's nobody it. better than the woman, dog. The, one, the, the moment you tear your queen down, you tear your whole country down. Because only in the womb of a woman can a man breathe underwater. It's only one entity that a man can breathe underwater. That's a woman. We born to be leaders, dog. You cover your pain with drugs and alcohol. And by the middle of the night, that pain right back on your chest is right back in your head, like it never left. At the end of the day, we're not, we're not living to die, man. We're living to turn this country into something special. And that's something, that's something this world ain't never seen before. You got every resource. You got the most richest soil in the world. This is the, most, this is the number one black country on, in the world of New York. Like I said, I came to this country for free. I used my, some of my own coin. I came here to see y'all, man, because I feel like this is the country that can start everything for African-American people. I want to teach my brothers in Chicago, in Atlanta, Georgia, about my brothers down here. I want to bring them back here. I want to help bring money down here. I want to bring wealth down here. I want to build apartment complexes down here. So we have a, a nice plumbing, beautiful home, AC. I want all that for my people, but in order for me to do that, you can't have a tour scared to come, bro. If you had a tour scared to come down here, they can never help you. They can never help you. If you got a son, you got a daughter, and you want better for their future, you're going to do better for them. It's point blank, period. I'm from Michigan, man. Murder chaos everywhere. All we do is sell dog food. We got heroin. My uncle sold the dope to my mother that killed him. I buried my mother at 17, man. 17 years old, I had to be a man on my own. Now I'm growing into a multi-millionaire. And I'm not running for my people, I'm running towards them. I want to make money and I want to bring it back to my people so we all can eat. So we all can take our kids out the country. So we all can travel. Take our sons and daughters to Disneyland one day. Get our passport stamped. Escape this place and show the world that the best gifts come from the bottom. See, in this world right now, kings, a lot of black kings and queens believe we the whole puzzle. But we only a piece. I'm a piece. You a piece. Don't tell your brother to stand behind you. Tell him to stand on side of you because he a king too. Take care of your community. It don't matter how small a home is. The only thing matters is the love that's inside of you. We all we got, kings and queens. We all we got, man. We over uh, closing in on close to 100, 100 plus, over 100 plus murders of our own people. You killing the best gifts God ever could have put on this earth, man. At the end of the day, you can act gangster, you can talk tough, but one thing that's undefeated, that's death. It's always a bigger gangster than you. It's always gonna be a bigger gangster than you. So when you die, they gonna forget about you. And your body gonna rot in that dirt. And nobody gonna remember your legacy. A man is a man that leave a legacy, bro. That represents something strong. Like Marcus Garvey, Paul Bowen. Now the other rules, these legends. That spirit still walk these cities, man. It still walk these towns. And that greatness is still here. You can take the body, but you can never take the soul. 
You can take the body, but you can never take the soul. You can kill all these murders. Look how many of us still standing out here. You can't knock us off, but you cannot. You cannot run around shooting bullets at babies, man. That's the word. That's the mark of a coward, man. You shooting, and you don't even know what you're shooting at. That's the mark of cowards. If you a killer, you walk up to him, that man, that man, and you talk to that man. Try talking to your brothers before shooting your brothers. I understand, I'm from the slums. If a man say he gonna take my life, I gotta kill him before he get me, I understand this. In my religion and with people around me, in the, in the, in the nation of Islam religion, back home and what they study, a man protects himself and he protects his family. But one thing he don't do, he don't take out his babies and his innocent people that just walk this neighborhood, man. You gotta be, you gotta be a boss about this. Bosses don't just act like maniacs and, and, and barbarians, man. They're strategic and they know what they doing. So at the end of the day, Kings, I'm telling you now, the world's trying to blind Jamaica, bro, of how great and how rich it is, bro. They want to send you guns, they want to send you liquor, they want to have you fight against each other for a block that none of us own, none of us make dollars out of. We don't get no money for this block. We don't get paid for this block by the hour. You just stay on this block while the world cover you up and put a bowl on top of you. So they'll never see you. All the talent in here, it's a billion dollars right here. Some of the greatest artists in the world come from right here. You take the dollars you make and you build a state of art studio for your whole community. Then you put your artists in that studio and you make them artists create the best music this world ever seen. And you make them bring them dollars back to the hood. And then we build another king and another queen. And we build another king. When that queen good at what she do, we put money behind that queen. Queen, you make it, we make it. Thank you so much for listening, man. I love you all, man. I'm not crying because I'm weak, man. Because I love you, man. I don't know you, but I love you. I'm happy you're here. Alright, nothing more. Alright. Nothing more. I'm here two weeks ago. And we promised we would return. I'm happy to see you. See you. We went to Corner One and we had a meeting over there with some of your people from Gully, and now we are here today because we want it to be fair and we wanted to have a lasting peace. What we said at Corner One was that the two communities where you share family, blood and friendship that you cannot descend into war and instability. And I was happy that Beto came across with a crew and so we are back here today and we are spreading the same message that we have to keep the two communities as we used to as one one love and one peace today we have some friends with us everybody knows Paul Burke everybody knows that the leaders in the community but we have two special guests with us King Stone, who is here, and we have King William Gullis, who is here with us, and they want to share a few words with you. And then we're going to hear from some of the big people from the two communities. So, Stone first. Uh, my name is Claude Sinclair, but everybody calls me Big Stone. I'm a record producer and I'm a motivational speaker. I was born poor. I went to school barefooted. I didn't wear underwear until I was 12 years old. For the life of me, I couldn't stop wet bed. I sleep on chink and kaya mattress. Nobody can tell me about going to bed hungry. I've been through all of that. My mother and father was the poorest people in Enfield, St. Mary. I am 62 years old now. I used to live in the United States of America. But after learning about Marcus Garvey and learning about who I am as a black man, 
I think my purpose is better off in Jamaica, more going into different, different communities. If you all look on YouTube, you must have seen my videos. I have over 3,500 videos on YouTube. I've been to a lot of community, Bower Bank, I've been to McGregor Gully, I've been to Halman Town, I've been to Tivoli Gardens, I've been to Southside, I've been to Tel Aviv, Denham Town, and Trench Town. This Saturday, we're having a massive One Love concert at Tony Spalling Stadium. And I took the audacity of inviting my friend, King Alice. The reason why I invited this man, because he grew up in the same circumstances that most of you all grew up in. His mother died of a heroin overdose. Do you understand what heroin is when you stick needle in your arm, drugs in your arm? He used to sleep in these houses just to watch his mother's back. The heroin that killed his mother was sold by his uncle. Sold the heroin because everybody, they taught them how to survive and that's how they do it. Sell drugs to survive. His father is currently incarcerated for murder. His father used to be a hitman, go around and just killing people for money. This man used to eat out of garbage. He used to sleep on the subway, in the buses. You know what that is in the cold part of winter? There's no winter in Jamaica. But winter in the United States, especially where he's from, Pontiac, Michigan, is Hell House. He grew up extremely poor. He was about to take his life, but he wanted to become a motivational speaker and motivate other young people like you about how he was grown and what he had to experience. Because if you listen to experiences, you can make a better life for yourself. You know, my experience can help you with your situation, your experience can help the other person. But he was about to take his life, had a gun and everything. He went to school where they asked him to speak and he spoke to some young children about his life and how his mother died from a heroin overdose. And they start crying and could relate to him. On his way home to take his life, he got a call from the school principal that, Mr. Hollis, listen, that speech that you gave, I think you got something in you. How much money do you charge to speak? Everything that he has ever had, everything, his house, his car, his money in his bank, his wife, his jewelry, his spending money, came from the ability to speak. You understand where I'm coming from? So I'm not gonna draw this out too much. I invited him Big Stone Records along with Powerhouse 